latest rollout of 5G has led to some disruption in the skies with some flights to and from the U.S. grounded. But what does this all mean for you? In what exactly does 5G technology have to do with flights? Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Dan Halley to break things down for us. And this is a conversation that we were really focused on last week because the 5G rollout was delayed a number of times because of concerns from the FAA. Break this down for us. That's right, Akiko. Now they're delaying the rollout for another six months. So there's this kind of reprieve that the FAA uh, and FCC and uh, carriers like AT&T and Verizon have gotten for the time being. But this isn't fully flushed out yet. So just to give you uh, an idea of what happened and where we stand now, let's go back to December 2020. That's when the FCC was setting up to launch an auction for 5G spectrum. Now, uh, AT&T and Verizon were very keen on getting access to the spectrum because it really is called kind of the Goldilocks spectrum. Now, both carriers have 5G that's slightly better better than 4G LTE that you have now, and then uh, a version of 5G that's incredibly fast, but has super short range. We're, we're talking like blocks, maybe. Uh, and the interference uh, with that is also incredibly high. I mean, if someone walked in front of you uh, between you and the, the cell phone antenna, you're not going to be able to get any kind of 5G. So this was a version that would eliminate both of those problems. It would provide massive range, as well as huge speed boost. So you can understand why they wanted to get that 5G. But just before the FCC was set to uh, auction that off, the FAA had come forward with a memo saying, look, guys, we think that there's going to be problems with this radio spectrum. And that's because it sits incredibly close to the same radio spectrum that these altimeters in these planes use. And so uh, the radio altimeter is essentially a way for the plane to say, well, there's the ground and here's me and that's the distance. So it really helps keep planes from hitting the pavement uh, in low visibility conditions. So this is something that's been known for years and that's what's so frustrating uh, when you look at the issues that crept up. So fast forward to uh, a few weeks back and what we had was, uh, AT&T and Verizon basically agreeing <clears throat> at the behest of the Biden administration uh, and uh, the head of the DOT, Pete Buttigieg, basically saying, you know, look, we really need you guys to hold off on launching your latest versions of 5G. There were conversations back and forth. Uh, and so now where we sit is there are what are called 5G buffer zones around different airports. And those are going to last for six months. Uh, more or less what they are is a way for uh, 5G to be uh, deployed, but not at its fullest extent. And now, there's been conversations back and forth about why in Europe they have 5G near their airports uh, and why we don't have uh, it here right now. And the reason is because uh, 5G here, uh, according to the FAA, uh, runs at higher uh, uh, power capabilities. So it is an increased chance of uh, interference uh, and the way that the antennas are actually set up, where in Europe they're kind of face down, here they're facing out to maximize range, uh, and that can also add to potential interference. But you know, as uh, the FAA does point out, these buffer zones are much smaller than they have in Europe at their existing build out, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Now, uh, the FAA has said that they've cleared some 78% of flights now, uh, or planes, uh, in the commercial fleet. So what you could do is just get on a plane and essentially fly normally. Uh, there are some that are still being looked at to determine if the 5G will actually impact the altimeter. And if they are, then those planes would have to be retrofitted. Uh, but as I said, for the next six months, these carriers have agreed to not fully roll out their 5G around these different airports uh, and will instead lower the power and have these buffer zones that planes can fly into. But as I said, this is something that was known since December 2020, uh, and it all could have been avoided if these two agencies had really kind of coordinated more closely.